ในช่วงเช้าเราพูดถึงเรื่องของ disruption ที่เกิดมาจากการแพร่ระบาดของโควิดสะท้อนให้เห็นในเรื่องของความจําเป็นในเรื่องที่จะต้องปรับปรุง supply chain แต่ความท้าทายของการปรับปรุง supply chain โดยใช้ดิจิตอลนะครับคงไม่ได้อยู่ในเรื่องของเทคนิคอลอย่างเดียวสิ่งเราจะต้องคุยกันต่อไปก็คือการเปลี่ยนองค์กรหรือการสร้างวัฒนธรรมองค์กรเพื่อจะทําให้คนภายในองค์กรนั้นช่วยกันคิดช่วยกันทําหาโซลูชันใหม่ๆครับและในหัวข้อถัดไปครับจะเป็น best practice sharing ในหัวข้อ building a culture of innovation ซึ่งบทเรียนที่ดีที่สุดนะครับน่าจะมาจากองค์กรสากลที่มีการสร้างแล้วก็พัฒนานวัตกรรมโดยการใช้ดิจิตอลโซลูชันอย่างต่อเนื่องนะครับขอเชิญกับพบกับวิทยากรท่านต่อไปนะครับคุณเอพริลสิวิกรนะครับท่านเป็น Country Manager Google Cloud ประจำประเทศไทยฟิลิปปินส์และเวียดนามเชิญพบกับคุณเอพริลครับผมสวัสดีค่ะ Good morning, everyone. My name is April s t r i b i k o r n and I'm the country manager for Google Cloud in Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Today, I'm here to share our perspectives on digital transformation and what it takes to build a culture of innovation. Let's first take a quick time machine back to 25 years ago through the evolution of Google to when we started off as a company. In 1995, Larry and Sergey met as classmates at Stanford. Uh, both were interested in data mining and organization, organizing information. In 1998, they built their own computer housings. The first server was built in Larry's dorm room, which became Google's first data center. And meanwhile, Sergey set up a business office. Uh, and by the end of the year, they had traded up to a garage. And uh, were yet deemed to be known as an innovative startup with a new approach to web search. Flash forward to today, you see that uh, Google now has more than 100,000 employees. Uh, we're represented across 60 countries. A trillion dollars in market capitalization, right? And just search becoming a part of everyday life. All throughout that journey, our mission. Continues to be the same, which is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. This enables people from all around the world, whether that's farmers in the northeastern part of Thailand to small business owners in Italy, to find and connect to the information that they need to run their businesses and to carry about their everyday activities. And that mission. Continues to guide us in the development of enormous number of uh, products and technology that we have in our portfolio. For from those that you are familiar with in your everyday lives, like search, YouTube, Gmail, Maps, and apps on our Play Store, to other products on the far right that are still in incubation mode. Some of them housed under Google X, which is our Moonshot factory. As Eric Schmidt, our former CEO, used to say, incrementalism leads to irrelevance over time, right? Especially in technology. So the key takeaway here, he said, was that we need to force ourselves to place big bets on the future, and that's how 10x thinking um, got started uh, at Google. It's a matter, if you think about it, of perspective shifting, right? In Google X, uh, the person who runs it, his name is Astro Teller. He used to say, "An analogy is if you want your car to run on 50 miles per gallon of fuel, fine, maybe you can retool your car a little bit. But if the problem statement was that we had to get it to run on a gallon of gas for 500 miles, you really have to start over with how you think about the whole problem." That 10x thinking carries through to all of the new bets that we have. Whether that's Project Loon, which is orbiting balloons, providing high-speed internet access to remote locations around the world, our self-driving car, delivery drones, to robotics and smart diagnostic medical sensors. The next wave of Google innovation includes the other bet companies that sit within Alphabet, our parent company. These include Waymo, our driverless car unit, DeepMind, the world-leading AI company that is based in London, or Verily, the life sciences unit which looks at healthcare and prevention. 
Let me now talk about Google Cloud and our mission with how we help uh, businesses. Google Cloud's mission has always been to provide a platform to support digital transformation using data. And we are working with organizations across industries to reimagine how they can transform their business models digitally. We've now really entered the age of AI. In fact, we've talked about AI for a long time, but reality creeps up on you and suddenly it's here in full force. And what you see in the background behind uh, Sundar there is our quantum computer, the world's fastest supercomputer. Many of you may recognize this game. What is important is that this signifies the first time that machines have surpassed human intuition. So our computer, DeepMind AlphaGo, beat the World Go champion that year. This is a game that for the longest time was considered impossible for computers to beat human at. If you think about the number of permutations in terms of the moves that you can make in this game, it's roughly equivalent to the number of atoms there are in the universe. So when the match was played, experts in the field estimated that it probably would take another 10 years before computers were powerful enough to beat a human player, especially the top player in the field. So that's the power of AI where the now famous Move 37 that you saw in game two showed a certain intuition by AlphaGo where a play was made by the computer in a different area of the board than where the game, the rest of the gameplay was happening, right? Totally unexpected and something that a human had never considered before. And of course, Google uses AI in our own facilities. So we apply deep learning to our data center cooling. We ended up saving ourselves 40% on our cooling bill or 15% on the entire data center energy bill. That part is key. It was actually done by engineers who knew little, they weren't trained in formal um, thermal theory. Instead, they came in with an AI skill set to try to find a new angle to solve the problem. And that's really amazing if you think about it, because even a single digit improvement um, on this by humans would have been already considered uh, quite significant. In our everyday lives, artificial intelligence already uh, drives you to work every day, um, brings your family to the movies. AI will help detect diseases when it comes to diagnostics and uh, recommend what the right course of treatment is. AI can also make phone calls and reservations for you. You may have seen in an example where um, our AI system uh, made a call to a uh, hairdresser and the receiving end of the line, the hairdresser uh, couldn't detect that they were not speaking to a human, but rather to an AI. But what really is the common thread that all of these examples, all of these use cases have in common. It's data. Data is the new currency of digital transformation. And many companies are still at an early stage. They haven't fully realized the potential that lies in effectively analyzing big data yet. By being able to drive a more data-centric mindset with your employer, with your employees, you can not only make everyone's job more meaningful, but also greatly improve every area of your business, whether that's product development through to marketing and providing customer service. We have an abundance of digital signals today being created in and around us, and this is creating new opportunities to leverage this data in different ways. When your customer, for example, is trying to connect with your business on Google search, it's very difficult for a human being to be able to handle that much complexity. The only way for you to deliver a meaningful experience to your customer is to leverage the power of machine learning, which helps you automate your way out of all that complexity and provides the speed you need in response. 
So today you can use machine learning to optimize all of your marketing efforts towards the business objective that is most important for your business, whether that is branding or that is lead generation. So why, you ask, is all of this happening now? We really are at an inflection point in you know, the enablers required for AI. If you think about it, we now have enough devices that we use for data collection, whether that's your mobile, your tablet, your laptop. We also have the pipes that are required to centralize all that data so that it is in one place for analysis. Thirdly, you also have large amounts of data, and this goes back to you know, all the digital signals and the digital uh, um, uh, data that is out there. There's affordable and specialized compute power. So we've gotten to that point now, as well as skills and tooling that make AI accessible. In the age of AI, regardless of whether your customer is internal within the organization or external, business to business or business to consumer, your customer will be expecting a different level of value, right? Winners in the age of AI will be building systems that can self-improve upon themselves. They become smarter, more valuable every time they're used because they learn from the past. They will also focus on the users who will now become accustomed to conveniences and uh, the customization of experiences, right? They just expect things to work. It's not that people will say that the, the products that do these things are smart, it will just become their expectation. So as, as uh, Sundar has said, um, machine learning is core to all we do at Google in terms of how we think about developing the products and services and other causes. We do that in three ways. We are making the benefits of AI available through apps, software, and services that we provide. So this is in our own products and services at Google. Secondly, we're working with researchers to tackle big challenges, whether in the medical field, environmental conservation. We find that working openly with the community on solving these challenges is what's most impactful, and we pick those big challenges to focus on. Thirdly, we're partnering with businesses and other organizations to bring them the benefits of AI. Now, let me show you a couple of examples in each of these three areas. If you look at our own products, most of uh, uh, all of our products have uh, integrated uh, machine learning, whether you can see that in Smart Reply in Gmail or the product recommendation engines uh, across our Play Store or YouTube. At a broader level, if you talk about the sector of agriculture, AI can detect diseases now in plants. Take cassava. Cassava or mansapalang is a main source of nutrition for probably 500 million people around the region, right? But most notably in Thailand, Indonesia, and Africa, where it is a crucial crop for us. The problem with this plant is it's prone to many different diseases that farmers often cannot identify or know how to treat. So we worked with a couple of organizations, Plant Village and the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture to develop a solution using machine learning that can help farmers better identify and manage these diseases quickly. So you would feed into the system uh, thousands of images of uh, the cassava plant and you know the leaves being affected by diseases and put them through a learning model using TensorFlow. Once the model is trained to identify diseases, we deployed it in the app. So it's very easy for all of the farmers to just open the camera setting, wave their phones in front of the cassava leaf and see what disease the plant had, right? So the app would identify the disease and give options on how to manage it. This app called Nuru is now available uh, to 
everyone to use in five languages on our Play Store. And as we speak, we're continuing our work with the teams and those organizations to expand into more languages and more types of uh, agricultural crops. At its most basic, using machines to do the repetitive uh, low value tasks for humans allows for those tasks to get done more accurately. And that's because machines don't get bored or sleepy like humans do. And more so, it also frees up those of us who were doing these tasks to be able to focus on more strategic, high value tasks. Beyond automation, other companies have been using more advanced usages of machine learning. Take the example of Pepsi and predictive analytics, where they wanted to take uh, all the trends that were happening around us, you know, the 40, 50 trends that people were talking about at that moment in time and distill it down to, you know, which were the two or three that mattered the most. This allows you to do two things. First, you get ahead of your competitors because you're being predictive. So you're going to be activating against those trends a lot sooner than some of your key competitors. And secondly, it reduces all the noise. It adds simplicity to your business by saying, look, here are the couple of things that we have data and evidence and consumer opinion behind. And this is where we should focus on digging a little bit deeper and finding solutions or to inform our product development and, and how we communicate with the consumer. Ocado is a company that is based in the UK. They are the world's largest online only grocery supermarket. Because they're online only, they don't have the luxury of physical stores. So Ocado needed to differentiate by having the best customer service in the industry. Their online ordering system and call centers were the lifeblood of the company. And so they really had to stand out um, from traditional retailers who would have, you know, the channels of the physical storefront available. So if I was an Ocado customer, I would reach out to customer service in one of three ways. I would call, I would tweet them or email. And the whole process would be rather seamless as Ocado doesn't ask me to fill out any forms, right? No drop down menus. I don't need to self categorize my email. Instead, all of my messages get delivered to a centralized mailbox, regardless of whether I was filing a complaint or making a general query. Then Ocado uses the Google Cloud platform and machine learning products to prioritize and segment user requests and they would put them in a queue based on the level of importance. Trying to do this at scale manually with people is it's just not possible to sort through that number of queries in a short period of time. So in this example you see in the green box, machine learning can read a customer comment, they can analyze it and identify that, oh, this is a happy customer that will certainly get a personal response at some point soon, but it's less of a priority than a customer who is contacting them about a delivery that was supposed to happen but hasn't yet. Aside from these examples that I have just mentioned, there are many more industry-specific transformation solutions. We offer a broad range that are based on Google's expertise in AI and machine learning. These are designed to solve important business problems in different industries. This not only helps save costs and helps with things like demand planning in retail, quality inspection in manufacturing, but they also help you get results quickly because you may not need to invest in an army of data scientists to get these solutions for, for the organization by leveraging what is um, available. We can look uh, at each of these industries in turn, the key ones. Take retail. We see three important problems for retailers. The first is the ability to accelerate how you monetize omnichannel commerce. Secondly, to transform the organization into a data-driven and customer-centric retailer. 
and thirdly, to modernize what is the core retail operations. So we've worked with organizations like Carrefour, who have used our technology to modernize their business. For them, it's about bringing innovation to the food industry. So what they're focused on is really making good food accessible to all. They realize that it's going to take the whole company to drive this change and make that possible. So they rolled out G Suite across their um, 140,000 employees. So this is a collaboration tool that helps, uh, helps teams work together and, and collaborate better. They also redefined the channels for shopping through the Google Cloud platform and developed an omni-channel platform strategy for their consumers. If you're a telecommunications company, uh, we've worked with telcos in three important ways. Monetizing 5G and edge computing, helping transform how you serve customers, and also help modernize core network operations. For instance, we're helping a leading telco transform its contact center through virtual agent technology that streamlines how they assist customers through voice as well as self-service channels, answering questions and assisting human agents, thereby lowering costs and improving satisfaction scores. If you are a financial services institution, uh, they are focused mainly on three areas. To accelerate omnichannel banking, transforming yourself and how you use data to run your business and modernizing their core banking operations. In healthcare or life sciences, we are helping organizations accelerate drug discovery and distribution. We can support in areas like genomic data management or drug simulation for discovery. If you are a hospital or a healthcare provider, we can also help improve how you deliver patient care in a secure and continuous way. We offer with our partners great solutions for telehealth to help doctors take care of patients and also to help doctors, nurses, and hospital staff collaborate amongst themselves. And finally, we can help you modernize the core IT infrastructure for life sciences and healthcare institutions. We're introducing a large number of product innovations and working in incredible partnership with leading organizations across the world to transform and monetize these platforms to reimagine the business models and to help accelerate digital transformation as companies emerge from the pandemic. So the next question is what is needed to enable this transformation and changes in business model for your organization? What is needed to instill a data-driven culture, or rather an innovation culture within your organizations? And for this, I'd like to share with you some learnings on how we do this at Google. Firstly, there is the matter of organizational construct. How can I create cross-company ways of working? What are the structures that we need to transform? There's also the question of, how do we need to transform our IT function? And lastly, what else is needed in terms of the elements to become a truly data-driven company or team or organization? Looking at what has made Google successful, we believe these are the key enablers that are essential for organizations to get right. Let's look at each of these in turn. But before I do that, we can see that culture is the thread that ties all of this together. Whether it's at the level of what is visible in terms of organization structure and processes, or what may be under the surface, in this case, what are the shared values and assumptions within the organization and that the leaders within the organization are projecting and embodying in their everyday lives? First, let's talk about talent. At Google, we pay incredible attention to the whole employee life cycle. Starting off from the very first stage of recruiting, 
we spend twice as much uh, time um, than the average company uh, when it comes to recruiting. We take quite a scientific approach um, to hiring, leveraging unique techniques during the uh, candidate interview experience to be able to calibrate well and ensure fairness with the hiring committees that we put in place. Once they are in the organization, there's a strong attention given to new hires and the candidate experience when they join and over the first couple of months that they are on board. So when we have our all hands meeting that happens on a regular basis, we have senior leaders uh, welcoming all of the new Googlers or the new Googlers. And we give out um, merchandise like uh, new Googler hats and, and gifts. Right? There's also a big investment in feedback when it comes to our performance reviews. Everyone, when it comes to your uh, performance cycle, will need to provide a self-assessment of how you think you've performed, as well as ask for peer feedback. So all the other teams cross-functionally that have worked with you on these important projects during the cycle, what has been their feedback in, in how you know, you've worked with them, and then combined with the manager assessment. So it's really a 360 view. Celebrating is also very important, right? And we are continually uh, exploring, researching the meaning and outcomes of rewards, um, particularly those uh, around non-cash rewards. Encouragement. So here we have our best people teach. So there is something called G2G or Google to Google or training. Here, anyone can volunteer to teach any class based on what they have to offer the community, whether it's a yoga class or a class on public speaking. We also encourage full growth as a person and, and internal mobility. So we uh, provide a view that you can have into open roles and managers are trained to support employees through transitions within Google. The next pillar is strategy. So it's important in challenging times like these uh, to set a clear North Star for goals, for what, what we do and why we do what we do, because that is the thread that ties everything together and, and keeps the team inspired. But also importantly, it allows them to focus their priorities on the right areas when action plans and, and um, what's on their plate continues to shift. So how do we do that? There's a couple of things that we have in place here at Google. The first being around setting a common vision. We have something we call objectives and key results. We use OKRs to set ambitious goals and we track progress. What's interesting about these OKRs is they're usually public and they're visible. Um, across different levels of the organization so that you can see how OKRs for our CEO will cascade down to the region, to the country, and to the individual teams. And what this allows for is that each individual team member would see how the specific project that they are working on lends itself to contributing to a bigger cause or a bigger outcome, right? And they, they are able to then stay inspired because they can connect the dots between what they do and the broader um, outcomes that we are driving as an organization or as a team. Decision-making. Data is key to everything at Google. It drives key strategy decisions rather than being based on just opinions. So we use data here to test ideas, to push prototypes and um, evaluate the risk that we would consider taking. So that if we know that something is not working, we can act on it fast. What this allows us to do is, is uh, strengthen the process for effective decision making by leveraging the power of data. The next pillar is around structure. How do you organize yourself to support that strategy. At Google, we have uh, still have quite a flat structure. So this is designed to encourage flexibility and open communications. 
So employees and managers will have direct contact with each other and it's easy to um, cross team boundaries. We also have our internal directory uh, within Google where you can search for anyone, you will see what team they sit in, what they are working on. And this allows you to quickly identify who you may need uh, to reach out to and bring into uh, whatever uh, project you are working on. It helps avoid unnecessary bureaucracy where possible by providing such visibility. Also, the organization structure uh, has been set to, to support that. Um, employees, uh, you can see here at Google, will not be separated in the office based on what they do, but around product areas so that there can be that collaboration that happens informally uh, when people are seated in proximity. Teaming is another area that we've actually commissioned um, a lot of internal research to provide the guidelines for, for how, we, uh, how, we, how we work on this topic. So we've got internal research to understand um, what differentiates top performing managers from those that are just average, right? What are those attributes that really set our best managers apart? And these findings around the attributes are used to develop curriculum for training new managers for us, as well as used to um, do performance assessments and as categories for 360 feedback to be provided to all managers. We also have internal research that we've done to try to understand at the core of what drives effective teams. What makes for, for the best team dynamics and outcomes, right? Lastly, uh, agility. So uh, the profile that we hire for is the smart creative profile because we believe that change is a constant at Google. You know, in, in this day and age, just expect that things will continue to change. To be agile, we then focus on selecting top talent that has proven themselves to be comfortable with ambiguity. And they're people who are able to thrive in a fast paced, changing environment. Empowerment. Empowerment is about uh, the courage to treat your employers so that they feel a sense of ownership in what they do. If we talk about transparency, uh, we have our TGIF meetings where current events are discussed and questions are asked um, by everyone around the world to leadership. We have Google Guys, which is not your average uh, company survey. You, we do share the overall results of the survey, right? Which areas were ahead, which areas were behind. But at the same time, we also task the owners of their own Google guys, right? At the division level, at the country level, with providing actions to improve around areas that are key gaps and following up on those milestones. At the same time, we also take a longer term view to the data which is benchmark over time. So we can see we are making meaningful improvements um, that are sustainable over time in these areas. We make sure to reflect uh, the voice of our employees through our Dory, which is an internal tool for crowdsourcing and ranking questions that are top of mind that you can submit and get upvoted by your colleagues for discussion. Innovation, again, this comes back to uh, the philosophy of thinking 10x in what you do, right? We, we try to push ourselves um, to see whether we can improve things, not just by 10%, but by 10 times. There also is also the flexibility provided through our 20% projects that provides time for employees who wanna pursue projects outside of their core jobs, explore new areas. Many of our core products today, like Google Photos, Gmail, those have come out of what were initially 20% projects in the beginning that got explored in more detail. It is also important to create a culture of psychological safety. 
having team members feel comfortable taking risks and being able to speak up on new ideas and suggestions as a top priority. Psychologically safe teams are able to foster a culture of learning and innovation because all of the team members, they feel safe to learn from mistakes and to explore new ideas. And then we can reward learning from failure, um, you know, coming together to really evaluate what went wrong in a project, right? Um, taking a crit critical view, but a, in a blameless manner. And then we come out with action lists that help reduce the possibility of recurrence of, of, of that failure, right, in, in next iterations. Let's also talk about the environment, which for Google has a number of dimensions to it. So firstly, with workplaces, you would have seen some of our unique workplaces where we try to curate our offices with spaces that inspire and promote cross-functional collaboration. And we have on-site services uh, like bike repair, um, providing daycare for kids, haircutting. The, the aim is to really make our employees' lives easier. Also, environment also has to do with uh, providing tools for collaboration. So with G Suite tools, uh, we create an environment that is set up for teams to be able to work remotely, but still communicate effectively with each other and still maintain um, that sense of uh, team and that sense of community. When it comes to community groups, we have more than 2,000 email lists, groups, and clubs operating right now at Google. At the same time, we also offer Google Serve, allowing people to spend up to 20 hours per year to volunteer at organizations that they're interested in. And then we have wellness around food and fitness uh, that really support and help our Googlers lead uh, full lives and be able to recharge and energize themselves. Lastly, I'd just like to say, taking learnings from how we drive our business and build our own teams, Google can be there with you as a partner on your digital transformation journey and to help build a data-driven and innovative culture within your organization. Thank you for your time today. Sawadee เก็บเกี่ยวในเรื่องของตัวแนวคิดนะครับกลไกในเรื่องของการขับเคลื่อนองค์กรโดยเฉพาะการสร้างวัฒนธรรมทางด้านนวัตกรรมทางด้านในเ